Yes, you heard it right. This is my first Omega ever. The truth is, I did not plan to purchase a Constellation, let alone one in a C-shaped case. I did not find the case appealing before I saw it in person. I had a change of heart when I put it on my wrist. Also, I wasn't into gold watches. I thought they're tacky. Boy, I was so wrong. Welcome to where time is. This is Vit. I want to show you my recent unplanned purchase, the Omega Constellation from the 1970s. This was offered to me by a local reseller who mostly sells high-end vintage watches. This piece is not an exception. The reference number is ST1680056 from the early 1970s. It has a caliber 1011 chronometer movement with 23 jewels beating at 28,800 beats per hour. It has a quick set date. The case size is just 35 millimeters without the crown. The case is a gold capped stainless steel and it's uh, nine millimeters thick. It has a uh, mineral glass. The lug width is 19 millimeters, which is really not ideal if you want to switch um, uh, straps regularly. The lug to lug is uh, 40 millimeters. Case back is screwed down with constellation uh, emblem. Let's talk about the movement. According to what I've read online, Caliber 1011 is pretty reliable and accurate, although a lot of Omega enthusiasts don't like it because it does not look pretty, unlike the 500 series movement. As for me, I don't mind. I've had this for about a month now and I can say it's pretty accurate given its age. It gives me about 8 seconds a day, or minus 8 seconds a day. That is good enough for me. Of course, an Omega should have a premium strap installed, but it had a cheap leather strap when I bought it, so I went online and searched for a good uh, strap and found Watch Obsession. They are carrying Rios 1931 straps. I ordered this vintage Mocha natural leather strap from them, and I think it works and looks really cool. I had been looking around for a pristine vintage Seamaster lately. I looked on eBay, Chrono24, Reddit, and even Omega forums. Found a few but was hesitant to pull the trigger. I want to see them in person before I part with my hard-earned money of course, right? The dial on this constellation seemed pristine and fresh. I didn't see any sign of repainting. The indices and baton hands are intact. The applied logo looked fine for its age especially, although the case may have been slightly repolished, which I don't really mind. I've seen some uh, overpolished Omegas here in Cambodia and they look really bad. A week after I bought this watch, the same seller offered me uh, a reverse Panda. Uh, an, an Omega uh, reduced reversed Panda which was initially uh, offered in uh, Japan domestic market and he offered it to me for way less than the market price of that uh, timepiece and I wanted to buy it but I had no budget so I was trying to sell one of my watches and before I knew it someone already got it so too bad here it is side by side with my uh, IWC Calatrava from the 1950s. They have more or less the same uh, case size, 35 millimeters. But the uh, IWC is thinner than the uh, Constellation. Look at it here. By maybe one, uh, I can't remember, maybe by one millimeter. Now with my King Seiko chronometer from the 70s also. The, the, the King Seiko has a sunburst dial which looks really, really cool in person especially. Here it is on my wrist. It looks really, really nice if you ask me. 
And I think this is a keeper. I might flip this sometime soon, but maybe in a year or two, I'll, I'll keep enjoying it. Alright, that's it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for dropping by. If you like this video, just press the like button. And if you have any comments, something to say, something to ask, just uh, post it or write it on the comment section. Alright guys, see you next time. Bye!